Hello and welcome to Reinfused. And today we are going to be taking a look at this. Now this is the ICL OPD, or one per desk as it says there. It's an interesting machine, not something genuinely we'd look at because it is, in essence, a telephony computer. So just basically somebody would sit there and just use it to handle phone calls and phone books and stuff like that. It was kind of designed for executives in the period where they were still using secretaries to do all the messy stuff like actually talking to people and in the change where they'd start doing more of that on their own. Obviously not entirely, they're still executives that refuse that kind of thing. But the reason why this is interesting is because the basic technology is based on the Sinclair QL. Now it's not entirely compatible. There are these two things here, which are two micro drives. There's usually a shroud over this and I, I didn't get that unfortunately in the auction. But anyway, yeah, so these are two micro drives, although they are slightly improved by ICL. They did do a lot of improvements on it, including making it so it could store more data, which also makes them incompatible with the QL ones, but oh well. So it's although it's based on technology, it's not fully compatible. You can't use the same software, although apparently some works, but a lot doesn't. But it comes built in with a lot of the applications that the QL had on micro drive anyway. A lot of the uh, Scion applications are actually built into it. Um, so yeah. Now there's two things I want to do here. I've not been, I don't know if this works at all. I don't know if it works because I can't power it up. Now, generally if I wanted to power something up and I didn't have the power supply, it'd just be a simple case of probing out where the actual pins are, for the, the voltage pins are, the ground pins are, connecting them to the bench power supply, and then just firing up. Unfortunately, this here thing requires minus five volts, which my, let's say, cost-effective bench power supply is not able to give me, which is difficult, and I don't want to power up without that just in case some of the lines rely on it. But that's fine. We can still get around that. We've got this, which is an arcade power supply, and it has all the voltages we need. 12 volts, 5 volts, and minus 5 volts. Perfect. Now, there's another wrinkle in this whole thing. This used to come paired with a monitor. The whole thing would come as one. And the reason for that being is if we look on the back, oh, it's quite heavy as well. If we look on the back, it's got this 25, nope, sorry, 15 pin connector here. And this basically came from the monitor and supplied the picture back to the monitor, but also it got power from the monitor. The monitor had the power supply inside it. This would get them power and then it would push the signal back to the monitor. So we need to replicate that. And that's fine because fortunately, although it's a weird power uh, socket, it is standard 15 pin connector. So we have a 15 pin connector. We have a power supply. All we need to do is work out where those things need to connect and how. Now this is a bit of a mess at the moment, but that's fine because one of the other really, really cool things about this device is it's very modular. So this is a, te a telephony module and it basically has all the handsets and stuff. So we can, if I remember how to do this, I'll just pull it there. Oops. we can pull that out and the whole handset and everything then comes off. So presumably there would have been updated models of this and stuff. I'm not sure if any got released on. I suspect they probably did because this was not a world beater, but it was slightly successful because it uh, became pretty much the only game in town for a while. Now there's also this bit over here. Can you see that? There we go. So this bit over here, I'll fill it up, right side up. <laughs> so this bit here, which is the uh, a ROM pack with those, it's also got, I believe, the software in there as well. But that also comes out, and these ROM packs are separate little modules as well. So they also come out, so the software could be updated, you get memory upgrades and all kinds of things for it. So it is an interesting bit of kit on its own, without the fact that it's also based on the QL. So what we need to do is we need to open this, and again, this is where things are very interesting. Now, as you see, I'm missing a foot, I do know where it is, and the reason I'm missing a foot is because I looked at the bottom of this and didn't see any screws, and instantly said, they're under the feet, they're always under the feet. And so I started prizing off feet. <laughs> until I realised they weren't under the feet. In fact, they're not anywhere because there are no screws. The whole thing is held together with tabs. So you basically just stick a screwdriver inside here, all around the outside edge, 
and it comes off. So I will get to doing that. I will unfortunately have to have it in my hands like this because my workbench is a tip and trying to actually get space on it is impossible so I also can't get very close to it because underneath the workbench is also a tip. Yes, I need to tidy up. Oh, turn that right side up. So now this comes off like this. Uh, there's a few connectors, so we push this power connector through, which is like battery backed up memory. Store some settings. And then if we look inside, we see there's proper connectors for keyboards for um, the top side. So we can take that off. And there we go, that's the whole thing now comes off. You can see there, that's the micro drive mechanism, direct drive motors. So at least you don't have to worry about bands breaking. That is pretty much the only thing you don't have to worry about with micro drives though. And yeah, so there's the receiver stuff, which is obviously built in even though the part of it is modular. But there's always gonna be a telephone thing, so it's not surprising. Yeah, interesting, and the power LEDs. Nope, they are micro drive LEDs. Is there a power LED? So always you sort of have a power lid. Hopefully the micro drives will light up when it's powered on so we will know that it's powered on. Right, put that to one side. Now, this is, uh, this is also really interesting. Let's take the keyboard out first. And as you can see here, it's nice chunky edge connector rather than the weak things that Sinclair used to use. And of course a proper keyboard, which is horrible and spongy, but still a proper keyboard. Yes, so this is it. This is literally a machine. It's a very elegant design. Now, obviously, a lot of this is based on the QL, but it is from what I've seen on pictures. I've never taken apart a QL before. It is um, it's a bit different, quite different, in fact. Oh, look, there's a battery there which is dying. I need to remove that. Fortunately, they have kind of partitioned it off on its own there, which is good. Rather than being clumped in with lots of other components, it's got its own ground plane and stuff there, which is handy. Anyway, yes, yeah, so and this also is very, very modular. So this here is the ROM and well, presumably other stuff as well. There's a bit too much there for ROM. Oh, the microprocessor is also on this board. So we can just prise that off. So there you go, that's also modular. So that could be replaced. Um, yeah, the second part of this, so the first part of what I wanna do is just get the thing powered up and hopefully display a picture. The second part is I'm wondering if it's possible to actually turn this into a QL. Now I've read a lot and a lot of people seem to say no. That's generally never stopped me before from trying. I mean, admittedly, I usually fail at that point because they're right, but we should never stop trying just because we might be wrong. Now, there are some differences to the main board, yes, but from what I can work out, most of the difference is to do with the firmware. So as long as we can work out a way of replacing the firmware with the QL firmware, and that can't be that different because otherwise they would factor, there would be no point just reusing the QL design. Yeah, anyway, that's something to think about. Definitely a different video. So this is the ICL one per desk. It's quite nice. A quite, it's a quite pleasing design. Now what we need to do is, this back here, oh god that's horrible, we'll probably clean that a little bit first as well. So this here is our power and video cable uh, port, debris. So what we need to do is we need to work out where ground and power are. Now obviously finding ground is easy, ground points are everywhere, you should be able to check those off quite easily. So we have this. Now this is the combination of three separate websites. Interface Bus being one of them, as you can see there. I will put these in a link uh, eventually. If I don't remember immediately, I will certainly fix that. But yeah, so this is, should be all the information we need. Now the problem is, whilst this here has these pin numbers and what they are, A, we don't know if they're talking about from the cable point of view or from the socket point of view. B, although these number these are numbered and it's not explained what those numbers are, we don't know that it references as kind of a standard pinout. We can assume that, obviously, but we don't know. And C, we don't know if this is from the back or the front. So that's why we have to check. 
Assumption is fine, but not when you don't want stuff to blow up. So we will have to see if we can work out what is what. Now, that should be fairly easy. We have one, two, three, three earth points. As long as we can pinpoint those earth points and they make sense, then we'll know what the orientation of this pinout is. And earth points are easy. That was Earth Girls Are Easy, isn't it? I just thought to myself, wait, was that a film? That doesn't sound straight. That Earth Girls Are Easy, but yeah. Right, now finding out is fairly easy. We just have our multimeter, which we set to uh, continuity mode. I've got the word there for a second. And we turn on the speaker so that it will tell us with beeps so we don't have to look at the display. Now, and again, this is fairly easy. Earth points are fine. So this says one is, should be up here. So if this is correct, if that's this orientation and that's following that, then this here should be an earth point, which would make sense for it being up there. Earth. Yes, that's, so that is earth. Okay. Um, and then, Seven is also Earth, so that would be over here. Seven is also Earth. That is looking good. And nine is Earth, and nine is bloody hard to get to. So let's do it from the front instead. So nine would be here. Yeah, okay, so that's right. So we can be fairly certain then that this schematic is not only correct and following the standard pinout guide, but we also know that it is from the back, the front, sorry. <laughs> I've been wrong if I've got it wrong myself. Anyway, so following the actual, as we look onto the pins, Excellent. That's turned out a lot easier than I expected. So, what's the next step? Well, if the Earths are in the correct place, we can we can just assume that the rest of this is in the same place as well. So we know we need to feed in the minus five volts on pin eight, which is over here. We need to fill 11 and 12 with plus 5 volts, which is down the bottom in the middle-ish. And we need to put 12 volts on pin 13, which is over this side on the bottom. And I believe there's a power down line. I think we have to pull that low. No. Okay, so it's good we check that. We have to put power down high. So we need to connect that to the 5 volts line as well. So we could put a switch in there. It's probably not a bad idea. Okay. Well, that's fabulous. We know exactly what we're doing. 